So in this video, we're going to create the blueprints needed to infinitely generate tiles using something called procedural generation. So a procedural generation, in simple words, automatically creates something based on the rules and the conditions that you have set. So it's much easier to use a procedural generator instead of manually trying to create an infinite number of tiles which would be almost impossible. So now, what I'm going to do is open up the content browser by pressing the control plus space and in here I'm going to right click and then select blueprint class and we're going to select an actor this time I'm going to name this BP ground tile and then open this up and in here I'm going to replace the default scene root that is this little spear like thing over here by going and pressing the add button over here under the components and select scene replace the default scene root with this newly created scene and now that thing is gone after that we're going to click on the add button again and then select a cube we're going to name this ground from here i'm going to change the scaling of the cube on the x-axis by 10 the y-axis by 10 and the z-axis by 0.1 so make sure that the scaling is proper this is essential for the procedural generation that we're going to do later on and now that we have created this cube i'm going to give it a new material just for fun but if you want you can choose any material you want in my case i'm going to use a marble polished marble you can choose any material as you like and then what i'm going to do is i'm we want to create the walls for the ground platform so that the player doesn't just fall off from this ground platform or this ground tile in here and to do that i'm just going to duplicate this let's call it wall i'm going to bring it up a bit and change the scalings so now that we have created the two walls what i'm going to do over here is change the material because the mesh is actually you know not properly scaled up for the texture or the material we're using and it just doesn't work with this mesh so I'm just going to remove this and do something else yeah I'm going to select sandstone again you can select any material as you like it doesn't matter in this particular step it's up to your wish so now that we have all this ready what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three and I'm going to move them by the x value over here under transform location by around 500 i'm going to explain why we move these meshes by 500 units in the x-axis later because it can be a bit confusing if i explain it right now all you need to know is that this is an important step for the creation of our procedural generator so now i'm going to click on this add button under components and type arrow I'm going to remove the parenting from this and I'm going to move this arrow component all the way to the edge of this mesh make sure that the arrow is properly aligned you want the arrow to be a bit poking outside of the mesh like this shouldn't be a bit far away it should not be inside either or else what happens is that if we when we use our procedural generator create some weird effects and to avoid that we kind of making sure that the arrow is placed at the right position also make sure you only moving this in the x-axis and not in any other axis again when we create our procedural generator it's going to look weird if the position of the y or the z axis 
is in any other direction other than zero. So make sure that the position of the arrow and the location the XYZ transform are properly placed. After that, we're going to create a new function by clicking on this plus icon over here. And I'm going to name this get arrow transform. All right. So in this function, what I'm going to do is drag and type a return. And in the return node, we're going to press on this plus icon over here and make sure to change the variable type to transform. Give it a name arrow transform. Now back in the under my blueprint drag down and under variable components select this arrow and drag it over here and we're going to get the value of arrow and with this value we're going to drag from arrow and get its world position and this transform value get world transform will be connected to the arrow transform so basically what these nodes do is that we are using a function called get arrow transform which actually gets the current position of the arrow that is this arrow that we have just created and we are going to get the transform position value and using the return node we are going to pass that information back to the function so that we can access it in other blueprints and that's it for the video. In the next part of this tutorial series, we are going to create the logic needed to procedurally generate the ground tiles that we have created over here. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.